Let's get ready to rock. The wine, that is. I'm Greg. I'm Julie. And we're the Crafty Winers. All right, this is part two of how to make Merlot. So if you haven't watched the first one, uh, we'll link it over here. We started this Merlot on March 16th, and the initial gravity at that time was 1.110. Uh, three days ago, we checked it, and the specific gravity was 1.012. Then we checked it again today, and it's the same. So it is done with its uh, primary fermentation, and looks like it's going to have an ABV of about 12.15% which uh, is in the range for a Merlot, so I'm good with that. Now um, we're going to transfer it from the primary fermenter into a secondary one, and we're using an auto siphon to do that. I am not talented enough to do it by myself, so Greg is helping me, and I don't want to spill wine all over the place, because that's wasteful. Again? Again? I haven't done it before. Don't tell him that. <laughs> okay. This thing makes siphoning a lot easier. And you don't end up getting a face full of wine doing it. Which I don't mind having a face full of wine, but oh yeah, it makes a mess. So as we're doing this, we are trying to keep the end of the auto siphon off the bottom of the fermenter um, so that it doesn't suck up any of the lease or the <laughs> sediment that naturally occurs down there. And he's tipping it a little bit here um, so that we can get as much of the liquid out as possible without getting that. So it's a little bit of a juggling act and the reason I couldn't do it by myself. <laughs> okay, and we've got all that we can get out without getting the sediment on the bottom. And it turned out kind of perfectly because there's really very little headroom in this. So that's a good thing. All right, so next step is I'm going to take a little bit of this out and put it in my bowl right here. And then I'm going to add a 16th teaspoon of potassium metabisulfite. I'm not going to try to say that 10 times fast. A half a teaspoon of potassium sorbate and then a full teaspoon of Cheeto San and an eighth teaspoon of Kisasol. Okay. The potassium metabisulfate will um, make the yeast dormant. The potassium sorbate will slow fermentation and then the Kisasol and the Cheetosan are for clarification. So I'm going to go ahead and add this in. And then I'm going to proceed to stir for five minutes gently. Okay, now five minutes of gentle stirring has passed. Luckily, you didn't have to sit through all of that. And I'll just clarify that all of this stuff has been sanitized that we were using. I'm going to take the pH level now because if we have to add anything, it'll give it time before bottling to precipitate out and then we'll take the pH again right before we bottle. Okay, we took the pH level and it turned out to be 3.44, uh, which is in the range that we want it to be between 3.3 and 3.8. So that's good, and I wrote that down here on my batch notes. We have videos on both of those things, on taking batch notes, keeping batch notes, and doing pH. So if you haven't watched those things and you're curious, we will link them up there for you. Now I'm gonna add my oak, and we're using cubes. They are about an ounce, so if you're not using cubes, about an ounce, which we have baked in the oven at 225 for about 10 minutes to open the pores and sanitize them. And you can just put the oak in, but we are using this cute little infuser. And we also found that this tends to like to float because wood floats. So we usually add two or three food safe, lead-free marbles. 
And then I'm going to fight with this thing to get it on. Okay, got it on. And you'll notice this cool little fishing bobble on the end of it. And this has also obviously been sanitized. We're not putting fish in here, I promise. This is to make it float so it's easy to get out later. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in gently to try to minimize the amount of air bubbles that go in. And just like that, it sank to the bottom. So we are good there. Okay, so now I'm going to degas this and we use a food saver to do that. There's also a video on that. So if you haven't seen that, feel free to check that out too. And I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm done degassing it. I've put in this airlock with a little bit of sanitizer in it and I'm gonna put it away for about two weeks and then we'll check it and see if it's ready for bottling. If not, we'll put it away for another week and so on and so forth. I hope you enjoyed this video, part one and part two now on making Merlot. If you liked this video, please click the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do tell it you want all notifications. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much for your support. We'll see you again next time. Cheers.